Hi everybody! In this third episode, let's learn together how to make a DCC decoder with Arduino. In the first two episodes of this tutorial, we learn how the DCC standard provides that a command station generate commands, and that these are amplified by one or more boosters before being sent to our modern railway. Today, we talk about those devices that receive commands and carry out the required actions. Such devices go by the name of decoders. The DCC standard defines two families of decoders, multifunction decoders and accessory decoders. Multifunction decoders have the main task of controlling the moving elements on the layout. They are called multifunction because in addition to controlling a motor, they are also able to manage other functions, for example lights or sounds. In each locomotive that runs on a digital layout, a multifunction decoder must be installed. It is also possible to install multifunction decoders in passenger cars or wagons, for example to control the interior lighting or automatically open sliding doors. Installing the decoder inside the locomotive can be quite a complex operation. Fortunately, in recent times, more and more locomotives are already DCC ready. It means they have a connector under the hood to which a decoder can be simply connected, without the need for any welding or modification. There are different types of connectors. In Europe, they follow the NEM standard. Normally, decoder manufacturers offer the same decoder with multiple connectors so it is easy to choose the one compatible with the locomotive to be digitalized. As you can imagine, one of the fundamental requirements for a multifunction decoder is to be small, having to be installed in the limited space available inside the locomotives. For this reason, although there are some projects on the internet, it is usually difficult to make them at home. This is not the case for the second type of decoders, the accessory decoders. An accessory decoder, sometimes also called a stationary decoder, is a decoder designed mainly to operate elements of the layout, such as turnouts, signals, lights, sound effects, animation. In this video, we will learn exactly how to make an accessory decoder with Arduino. Let's start with the hardware. To keep it simple, we will build a decoder capable of turning on and off two LEDs. We will use an Arduino Uno board and a breadboard, where I connected the two LEDs, red and green, and the two resistors. We cannot directly connect Arduino to the DCC bus, as we have learned this has a voltage of plus minus 15 volts, while the pins of Arduino works at a logic level, from 0 to 5 volts. For this, we need to create an interface that is a decoder circuit that adapts the DCC signal to be read by Arduino. If you think about it, it's the opposite of what a DCC booster does. I had already introduced the schematic of the DCC interface in a previous episode. Today let's understand together how it works. In the center of the schematic you see this component. It is an optocoupler, in particular the 6N137. It is an 8-pin integrated circuit and it's available in both DIP and SMD packages. This optocoupler consists of an LED and a phototransistor. When the LED emits light, the phototransistor turns on and conducts current. Conversely, if the LED is off, the phototransistor does not conduct. The use of light allows to electrically separate the left side at high voltage from the right side at a lower voltage and to prevent any peaks on the DCC bus from damaging Arduino. I designed the interface both as a shield, very convenient for use with an Arduino board, as a separate printed circuit board. I leave you in the description the link to my GitHub repository where you can download the Eagle files for both versions. These boards are also available on Officina del Modellismo. Contact us for more information. We can verify that the interface works using an oscilloscope. The yellow line represents the DCC input signal, the blue the output signal. As you can see, 
the yellow signal is a square wave between plus and minus 15 volts, while the output one is, as desired, the same square wave but between 0 and 5 volts. Now that we have connected Arduino to the CC bus, let's move on to developing the sketch of our first decoder. Thanks to the work of Alex Shefford and other developers, a fantastic library is available, called NMRA DCC, to read the incoming DCC signal and parse the commands. We can install it through the IDE Library Manager. The first thing we need to do is to include the library in the sketch and define an instance of the NMRA DCC class. This instance will be responsible for decoding the DCC signal and sending notification, as we will see, when a command of our interest is received. We also define the pin to which we connected the DCC signal coming from the interface. We need to use a pin capable of generating interrupts. Refer to the Arduino documentation for the list of these pins, based on the board you are using. For Arduino Uno, the usable pins are 2 and 3. In the setup, indicate the chosen pin to the NMRA DCC instance, calling the pin method. We can use the digital pin to interrupt function to get the interrupt number associated with the pin. The third parameter enables or disables the internal pull-up resistor. Since our interface already has a pull-up resistor, R2, we can set this parameter to false. Let's continue by initializing the library with the init method. To this method, we must pass the manufacturer code of the decoder as the first parameter. If you remember, the NMRA maintains a list of DCC manufacturers, each with its own identification code. Fortunately, a code has also been reserved for homemade decoders the code 13 or 0x0d in hexadecimal. We can enter this value directly or use the constant you see. Second parameter indicates the version of the decoder. We can put the number we want. The third parameter allows to change the behavior of the library using predefined constants. The first constant we use indicates that we are developing an accessory decoder. To explain the meaning of the second, I must tell you about the way in which accessory decoders are addressed. The DCC standard, in the extended form, assigns 11 bits to indicate the address of an accessory decoder. This means a total of 2048 possible addresses. In reality, if we exclude some reserved addresses, we have 2044 addresses available. Each output of an accessory decoder can have a binary status on-off or, if it is a turnout, normal root or diverging one. The first way to address the outputs is to assign each one a different address. This mode is called output or flat address mode. By convention, an accessory decoder is considered to have four outputs. It is therefore possible another addressing method, which assigns an address to the decoder and a sub-address to each of its outputs. This mode is called board or module address mode. Back to our sketch, the constant flex output address mode indicates to the library that we want to adopt the first address mode, certainly simpler and more direct. For now, leave the fourth parameter to zero. I will tell you about it in a future video related to CVs. We have finished configuring the NMRA DCC instance. The last thing we have to do is to insert, within the loop, a call to the process method. This call should be made as frequently as possible, because it is the one that allows the library to analyze the incoming DCC signal. The basic structure of the sketch of a decoder is finished. By loading this sketch, Arduino is able to receive and parse the DCC signal. However, we have not yet indicated to the library what to do in case it receives a command intended for an accessory decoder. The NMRA DCC library works through callbacks. There is a list of functions that we can implement in our sketch and that the library executes when a particular event happens. We implement the notify DCC ACC turnout output function 
executed every time the library receives a command for accessory decoders and it is configured in output address mode. Three parameters are passed to this function. The address of the decoder to which the command is sent, the required direction, 0 or 1, the status required for the output, 0 or 1. Let's simply try to print the value of the three parameters. Now load the sketch and connect the decoder to the command station. I'm deliberately using a commercial command station to show you how the use of the DCC standard allows to work together commercial and domain products. I send some commands to the address 4. We notice two things. The decoder correctly receives the commands, identifying the address and the direction required. Each command is received multiple times. This is normal. Common station sends commands several times, to be sure they are received. Some common stations even allow you to configure the number of repetitions and their time interval. We must take this fact into account in the development of the sketch, being careful not to perform the same action several times. We are now ready to finish the sketch by adding the control of the two LEDs. We define the pins to which they are connected. In my case, I connected the red LED to pin 4 and the green one to pin 5, and the action we want to perform. If the direction is 0, we turn on the red LED, while if the direction is 1, we turn on the green LED. We must perform this action only if the command is sent to our address. Let's imagine it is the address 4. Finally, let's not forget to configure the two pins as output in the setup. We can load the sketch and verify that the decoder works. Today we have learned together how to make a very simple decoder, which can be used to control a signal or a turnout. However, the interface designed and the basic structure of the sketch can be applied, as we will see, to more complex decoders. If you like the video and don't want to miss the next ones, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and have fun!